tonight we're doing something um, very, very different, something that um, I don't think any of you have experienced, certainly not the way that we're going to do it. And it's going to take a lot of um, openness on your part. It's also going to take uh, a lot of following instruction. And please uh, trust us when we ask you to do a certain thing. Um, to just do it, OK? Um, so if we say we want this to be a time that we want you to be extremely quiet, um, just trust us on it. That, uh, some groups have uh, cooperated when we've done this over the past couple of years. Um, the, the groups that haven't, haven't got much out of it at the end of the night. And um, we have a lot of people who have uh, prepared uh, for tonight. Uh, there's people here. Um, there's people down in the church. Um, this, this has taken a lot to pull together. So, um, so we're hoping that you pull together tonight as well. Tonight's um, topic is going to be on prayer. Now, um, there's many ways that you could define prayer. I think probably the, the best way, or one of the best ways to define it, very simply, it's, it's commute, connecting our lives to God and how we accomplish that. Uh, one of the primary ways that we connect with anyone is through communication. Uh, where would we be today without the phones, without uh, the texting, uh, without calling someone? Where, where would, how would relationships be built? How would we connect with other people? Uh, the best way to connect with people is, is, first of all, just to talk to them, to learn about them. When you talk with people, you share your thoughts, you share who you are, you share your likes, you share your dislikes, and then you give them an opportunity for them to share that as well. Share what they like, share, share, share the things that you, you, you have in common. And that's basically how uh, a relationship builds. It builds through communication. And as you communicate one with the other, and you build that relationship, there's a connection, or there's a bond that takes place. Now think about that in, in your own lives. Um, right now, probably the most not as important relationship right now, um, it should be a parent, but in all honesty, probably at this particular moment in your life, your parent relationship has, has changed certainly since when you were uh, little kids. Um, am, am I kind of fair to, 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 to say that? It's not that you dislike your parents or anything, but your friends are very, very important to you right now. And that's normal. That's as you, are, you, you, you grow older and you get more independent. There is that little bit of tension that develops in our relationship with our parents. But a lot of that has to do, I think, with the breakdown of communication. Because remember what I said? The more we communicate with each other, the deeper and the stronger the bond becomes. So it works just in the opposite. If we don't communicate, then that relationship begins to fall apart. We stop sharing our feelings. We stop sharing our concerns. We stop sharing our lives. How was school today? Your mother asks. Fine. What'd you do? Stuff. And we break up and we break down that communication. When you were in second grade, you went home and blah, 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 blah. you couldn't stop talking about what we did, what we painted, what we drew. Now, I'll school. Fine. What'd you do? Stuff. And the communication ends. So communication has a lot to do with relationship. With your friends, communication now has gone in the other direction. Texting, 
Facebook for some of you, Snapchat maybe for others. Now when you use all these things properly, because any of those things can be abused, we know that, but when you use them properly, they're good things. And they're things that help to deepen that relationship with others. Because you do the same thing. This is how you communicate with them. If communication is so important to develop and maintain friendships and our relationship with others, it's also very true in our relationship uh, with God. Now some people will say and admit to me, I don't have a relationship with God. I know I'm supposed to, particularly if I'm going to be confirmed in a couple of months. But I, I don't really have a relationship with God. So the question I would ask is, when was the last time you communicated with God? Now, if you had a friend and you'd say, well, I'd like to have a relationship with this person, but I have no intention of talking to them. I have no intention of listening to them. I have no intention of even trying to be in their presence. Then we really don't want a relationship with that person. And I think the same is true in our relationship with God. That we, in order to have a relationship with God, communication has to be a part of it too. And the best way, the way that we communicate with God is, is prayer. Not through cell phones, not through texting. But, but when you, you stop and think, you communicate with your parents in a different way than you communicate with your friends, don't you? I mean, with your parents, most of the time, um, probably uh, calling them. Maybe you'll text them. Uh, a teacher, you might speak to them. Uh, maybe even exchange emails with your friends. It's texting the Facebook, um, the, the Snapchat. Uh, chat. These are different ways that we communicate with different relationships. So it's the same thing with God. We have to have a different way to communicate with God if we want to grow in the relationship. And the way we communicate with God is through prayer. Now, when I use the word prayer, most of the time, the first thing that comes to our minds is prayers. Prayer. Our Father, the Hail Mary, the basic prayers. And those are important because the Our Father was taught to us by Jesus himself. These were Jesus' own words. So that's why that's the, that's the important one. The Hail Mary is important because we know our special... Uh, relationship with our Blessed Mother. And those, those words are not only um, the words of Mary herself, but also combined with the words of the Church. So those two prayers are very, very important. But we also know, or should know at this point, that that's not the only way to pray. That's a formal way to pray. And it's good to have that formal way to pray because if I say all of us together, let's say a prayer, I would hope we could all join in the words of the Alpha Father. But if I said, let's all at once stop praying, but use your own words, it wouldn't be able to connect. And so those formal prayers are very, very important. But we don't always pray with and so informal prayer is another beautiful way to pray. And what I like about informal prayer is we just open ourselves up and we just share where we're at right now. I got a, um, a major test tomorrow. Or I, I'm having difficulties with, with my uh, friend. Help me, Lord. Guide me. Direct me. That's the prayer I tend to use a lot. I was in my car today, and I was driving uh, down to, um, to Fall River. And I was going to a very important meeting. And I was kind of concerned about the meeting. And all of a sudden, I turned off the sports radio. It could go off for five minutes. I didn't really have to listen time and time again to that, as much as I'd like to. But I would turn it off, 
And that time in the car was a time of prayer for me. So there's different ways we can pray, just like there's different ways that we communicate. And some work better than others with the moment and way that we're communicating. Just like sometimes it's easier to text someone rather than to pick up the phone and call. So it's the same thing in our relationship with, with God. If we want to develop that relationship, we have to discover the different ways that that communication works for us. Now, Mass, we see as the greatest form of prayer. And why is Mass the greatest form of prayer? Because it combines both the group prayer and private prayer. And it unites our prayers with the great prayer, which is when we offer Jesus to the Father, the Eucharistic prayer, when I hold up the bread and the wine, which now has become the body and blood of Jesus. And we offer that prayer to our Heavenly Father in union with, with Jesus. And so that's why when we say, you know, how important it is that you come to Mass on Sunday, because that is our, our prayer, our special, our, our most significant prayer as Catholics. And, and again, if we say, I don't do that regularly, I don't come to church regularly, and therefore I don't pray with the community regularly, then the communication is breaking down, therefore the relationship is breaking down. And so Mass is another way. The praying the rosary. Some of you might have rosaries. You know, one of these things. And what's beautiful about the rosary that we, we pray is because we use the common prayers, the Our Father, the, the Hail Mary. But as we're praying these prayers, we're thinking about the life of Jesus and the life of Mary. And so there's so many different ways that we can pray. But communication, so far I've talked about how we communicate to God. Formal prayers and formal prayers, the Mass. Well, communication is a two-way street. So the question becomes, well, how does God communicate to me? How does God speak to us? Well, of course, it's a little different. He's not going to call you on a cell phone. But what he will do is speak to you if you open yourself up to him. How are some of the ways that he speaks to us? He speaks to us in Scripture. I gave you those Bibles a couple of weeks ago. Have you opened them since that day? I hope so. Those are opportunities that God is speaking to you. You open up that Bible, particularly in the New Testament, and you read about the stories of, of Christ, or you open in the Old Testament the Psalms, which are prayers of petition or prayers of thanksgiving. And you just you don't have to read the whole Bible. You read like five lines of it. And you sit with it for a few minutes. And you say, Lord, what are you saying to me in these words that I just kind of randomly chose? So, so God does speak to us. God does communicate to us through Scripture. God communicates to us deep in our hearts if we give him space. And that's the problem is, is we, we don't give a lot of uh, space to God. And what I mean by that is you just have to be still. Just be still a little bit. Now, if we don't do that at all, and you say, well, God isn't speaking to me, but I think God's speaking to us, but I don't think sometimes we're listening. Because we have a lot going on from the moment we get up. we got uh, phones going, we got alarms going, and we got music going, and, and this is all great stuff, and I have all of it. I have all of it, and I use all of it. But I've had to work into my life, and sometimes I fail, but I have to work into my life a discipline to say, this is a God moment. This is a moment I'm going to put aside those things. Even my other friends, because I want to work on this relationship. You know, when I, I, I know someone who, uh, whenever I'm with, with him, and I'm talking to him. And he's talking to me. 
And then, as I'm talking back to him, all of a sudden, yeah, 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 yeah. He's talking to the person on the phone. He's texting me. And that's fine if you want to do that, but you can't do both. You have to have a certain discipline. That's why sometimes your parents might go crazy because you're using your phones. It's not that using your phone is bad, but if they're trying to communicate to you and you got your face in the phone, you're communicating with that person and you're only about half hit listening to the other person. If you want to build relationship, you need to work on communication. Um, life events. I'm a big believer of that. How does God communicate with me? Through events in my life. That I will look and I will say, that was a God moment. I can't prove it. I know it. I know it. Why do I know it? Why do I see those God moments and you say, I have never had a God moment? Look for them. They're there. They're in your life already. And I'm not just talking about a church moment. I'm talking about all of a sudden something just connects. And you say, how did that happen? We might call it a coincidence. In many respects, I call it a God incident. It's a moment that God is saying, I'm there, I'm listening to you. Another way that I believe God communicates to us is the world in which we live. You know, we take it so, so for granted. You know, it's, it's, it's incredible. It's, it's awesome. Nature. Sunsets. Talk about sons of well, yeah, there'll be another one tomorrow. I'll miss this one today. They might not be for you. They might not be for me. And so each moment, every once in a while, when we see something awesome in nature, just stop and say, thank you, God. Reminding us the world's bigger than me. See, those are different ways that I believe that that. God speaks to us, communicates to us. The sacraments, the sacraments of the church, they're, they're so much bigger than ourselves. Christ left us the sacraments. Just before um, Mass tonight, we had, um, our Mass tonight, just before uh, I came up here, I had uh, two people who are going to be helping us down in the uh, church when we go down there later on, come up to me and say, Will you uh, hear my confession, Father? Because they're going to be serving us tonight. They're going to be ministering to us tonight when we get down to the church. And they knew that they needed that moment of grace and confession because they wanted to be so open to this moment of ministering to you. They knew that that was a God moment for them. So the sacraments are so much bigger than ourselves. If communication is a two-way street, for communication to take place, we must be open to it. How can we get better at this communication? Give it time. Give it attention. Give God space. And don't give up. As we grow in our relationship with God, we start looking for moments of prayer beyond just saying a prayer or just being together in church as a prayer. But we also work on bringing prayer into our daily life. How do we do that? I've asked some young guys that um, I think give a tremendous witness to, and can, and do, will tonight to us. Um, these guys are from the Mansfield High Varsity football team. And what many of you might not know is that um, 
before most games, you'll find them here at St. Mary's Church to say a prayer. They have recognized, and this goes back now a couple of years, um, Willie Palanza was, was a big instrument in pulling that together, but gathering the team together for prayer as, as a way to kind of focus you on bringing God into the moment. So, you know, they're great because they, they've already been confirmed. Uh, they're here to just uh, share with you just for a few moments why they believe that prayer has made a difference in their life. So if each one of them come up, introduce yourselves, and share with us. Thanks. Um, all right, so I'm Kyle Wisniewski. I'm a senior at Mansfield High School. I uh, play quarterback on the football team. Um, so we, uh, like Father Steve said, um, a kind of informal prayer group started, uh, I think it was four years ago, with Brennan's brother. Um, and since then, it's really only grown. Um, Willie Palanz actually got me into it my sophomore year, and I've been going ever since. So it's just something real quick we do every Friday before our games. We uh, come down here. Um, we all say an individual prayer quickly, uh, maybe five, ten minutes, then we uh, all get together and say group prayer. Um, something that we always uh, uh, stress is you, we're not just praying to win, we're not just praying for success, we're, we're being thankful, we're praying um, to God, for, we're being thankful for the opportunities He's given us. Um, you know, we're all really blessed, uh, especially us, with the opportunities we're given to not just to play football, but just every day in life. And, uh, we think it's very important that uh, we thank God for those opportunities. You know, you're not just praying to win, you're not praying to be the best, but to really stress them, um, be thankful for the opportunity that He's given you. Hey guys, I'm Matt Pecoris, number four on the football team. I play running back. Um, whether we're in practice, having Posse Davis in the team, or even watching film, we're always just a guy that just bond and do whatever you can do just to become a stronger bond. But really the strongest bond you can have is spiritually. That's why every Friday we come to church as a team, all say our prayers, all say our Father, Hail Mary. It gets us spiritually bonded so we're ready to go out and play in the field. The team always has your back, but there's really no better feeling when you go out in the field knowing God is your back as well. Hey, how's it going? My name, uh, my name's Alex Roddy. I play running back in the linebacker for RC team. Um, prayer helps. Uh, helps through good times and bad times in your life. And, you know, I can go through tough times. I've gone through a tough time. Prayer definitely helped me through that. Uh, those tough times. Uh, I've also seen a pretty close football team grow even closer. From um, going to church and getting prayer, getting a blessing. And, you know, we've got uh, our football teams are really done with brothers. How's it going, guys? My name is uh, Mike Kirschman. I'm a receiver on uh, Mansfield. Um, and it doesn't it doesn't matter how active you are in going to church or how regularly you pray or anything. Uh, it's never too late to start. And uh, you know, it's something that definitely works for us. We've been consistent with it for about four years now, and it's um it's something that we really do regularly, and we really find value in. Um, just know that God's always uh, He's always there through the good times and the bad, and He's always He's going to be be there for when you need to lean on um, most. Hey guys, I'm uh, Brendan Hill from Mossway. I'm a receiver on the football team. And as far as you know, coming as a team to pray, you know, we, well, for myself, uh, I pray daily. You know, I wake up when I go to bed, and uh, you know, before before a game, obviously before a big test or recital or something you guys have going on. Um, it's something that makes me nervous or anxious. Something I the quote I like to remember is that. Uh, do not be afraid or terrified. The Lord your God is with you. He'll never leave nor forsake you. And for me, that just gives me a complete confidence, knowing that our God always has you, has your back as He has yours. I really love everything He created, so uh, I hope you guys have. Thank you, guys. Thanks a lot. Very, very proud of you guys. Really. Um, the team's going to be uh, instrumental in a couple of minutes, uh, leading us uh, literally in prayer. And this is something that um, is going to happen 
Uh, and this is, this is now the moment that you have to follow good directions, okay? Uh, Tommy is holding this device here, all right? Uh, this is called a monstrance. You probably, many of you probably have not seen this before because we don't use it for Sunday Mass. But it's used for the celebration of the Eucharist, but in a very different way. This is a way for us to reflect on and look at the Eucharist, the presence of Jesus. We believe that the Eucharist, this is my body, this is my blood. Jesus gave us that Eucharist to take and eat and take and drink as we do. But also, sometimes we can take the gifts that Jesus and that God has given us for granted. We can uh, take the gift of the Eucharist for granted. And so, one thing that the church gives us is a way to um, do this Eucharistic adoration, to think about the gift that Christ has given us in his body and blood. His body uh, given for us, his blood shed for us. In other words, when we celebrate and reflect on the Eucharist, we reflect on Jesus' death uh, for us, for our sin, to, to raise us to new life with him. And so what we're going to do tonight is we're going to have what we call Eucharistic adoration in a very, very different way. It doesn't mean all quiet, although there will be time of quiet, but there will also be time of joy, time of praise and worship of God. Because that's what we are called to do. We're called to give worship to God. And if we believe that Jesus is God, and Jesus is present in that Eucharist, which we are called to believe as Catholics, then God is present here in a very, very special and concrete way through the Eucharist. This monstrance that, I, I, that Tom is holding has absolutely no purpose unless you put the Eucharist in the middle of it. And then it becomes a vessel to hold the presence of Christ. So this is what we're going to do tonight. And the Eucharistic adoration is great because it not only brings moments that we can pray together with a group, but we can say our own prayers, we can bring all of our situations, all of our life, to the Lord. One, these, uh, one thing that I'm going to ask, though, in cooperation, is we're going to head down to the church now, and I'm going to ask you, 220 of you, teenagers, to walk in absolute silence. The Eucharist is going to lead the way. Football team will be behind them and then you'll be, be behind them. And we're going to go into the church in silence, and then go into the, the benches, and then just kneel down there. The church is big enough. I would encourage teachers not to crowd everyone in the first ten rows. Take a little space. Give yourself a little space to be with the Lord. And finally, I'm just going to ask that you please respect the people near you. Because they might be really trying to communicate with God tonight in prayer. And it would be a shame if you were the one that caused them to lose that communication. Let's help one another tonight by our respect for one another and our respect for Christ in the Eucharist um, as we now go down in silence. I'm going to ask Deacon Tom now to come forward with Jesus in the Eucharist, place it in the monster. Just take a couple of moments now.
as we prepare for this procession to recognize that in following the Eucharist we are in a very real sense following Christ. So I'd ask if the uh, football team come behind me and then we go row by row beginning with the front row and then follow us down. Please remain in silence going into the church and then as we get into church we move from silence to worship and praise. Please stand.